This week on Full Circle Florida, your voice on abortion. Exactly, you have a voice. What you told me about Amendment 4. Israel, Iran, and the risk in the Middle East. Can the U.S. stop the spill of war? And our panel discussion, DeSantis backtracks on book bans, the Trump trials, and remembering a beloved Florida legend. Bob Graham. Welcome to Full Circle Florida. On May 1st, Florida's six-week abortion ban will go into effect. And then on November 5th, Florida voters will have the chance to decide whether to expand abortion rights to around 24 weeks. Pro-choice, pro-life, here's your voice. Hi, how you doing? Can we get your opinion on something? Serious topic. Beautiful day for a heavy topic, but we got to do it. Abortion. How do you feel? You're going to be voting on it come November. So let's get a sampling of where people are at on this issue. Not the church, not the state. Women must decide their fate. Abor no, no, thank you. no, thank you. Let's see if these folks will talk to me. Pardon me. Boy, I know how to pick the topics, don't I? Amendment 4 on the ballot in Florida has to do with abortion, how to define it. What are, what are your, th we're just trying to get a sampling of where people are on that topic. I am pro-choice. Woman's choice, you know, woman's body, woman's choice. I can walk with you. I know I don't want to interrupt your walk. It's a heavy topic, just warning you in advance. This is one of those where I almost feel, I feel awkward asking the question, but I want to know how people feel about it. We're talking about Amendment 4, guys, on the ballot uh, has to do with abortion. I don't think that the government has an opinion on that at all, whatsoever. It's a woman's body, and it's a decision between a health care provider and a woman. I wonder if I'm going to get a balanced... Am I going to... I mean, I get what I get, right? I mean, you get what you get. I don't know these people. They don't know me. They don't know what I'm going to ask. I don't think the Riverwalk is a political place uh, that's biased, right? People of all walks come here, so we see what we see. Hey, how's it going? I'll be honest. Uh, I think that women has to have their their own their, their own their body, but you, you need to have some sort of like a, a limit for it. I'm not even close to having what I need right now. In the ballot language, it doesn't say 24 weeks. It just says viability. So some people have raised some concerns that that leaves it very vague. Do you think there should be a, a number on it? 15 weeks, 24 weeks, etc. I know it's complicated. I know it's heavy. It's not, not really for me to decide. I mean, you know, they write the laws, we vote on them. If we don't like the way the law is written, then, you know, use your vote to express yeah. that. I'm personally not for abortion, but, you know, each person thinks and feels different. We've seen abortion bans being put in place all over the country. Uh, what are your thoughts? Well, I'm Catholic, so my thoughts are, I am pro-life. Do you know where you are firmly on that topic of abortion? In my belief, um, life begins at conception, so I am um, anti-abortion, pro-life. I'm firmly in God's Word, and um, I have had you know experience with that and with friends, but learning God's Word and knowing that life is for, comes from Him. I don't believe that it's my place to personally do that. Do you think there should be a timetable on it? We've heard 15 no. weeks, 24 weeks. No. <laughs> no. no. Why would a man have anything to do with a woman's body? Timetable for the procedure? Right. Or should it, or there are some people who think that it's uh, life begins at conception and there is I no abortion. I believe that life begins at conception. Thank you. I know it's a Thank serious you. topic. Appreciate your input. Thank sure. you. Thank Take you. care, guys. I could have easily picked something a lot lighter, but you know. Exactly. You have a voice. Women deserve better. All right, let's bring in our panel. Janelle Irwin Taylor, publisher of Southeast Politics and our political analyst, Dr. Susan McManus. Um, are Florida Republicans starting to reposition themselves on abortion? It, they have to. I mean, Rick Scott said he supports 15 weeks now. He signaled that this week. I don't think it's a question of are they repositioning themselves because I think that most of them, at least those who are seeking re-election or election in the 2024 cycle, are definitely having to kind of walk the line on the abortion issue. I think it's more a question of what is that line. Mm -hmm. So it seems like 15 weeks is kind of their compromise. The question is going to be, you know, is that going to be palatable to the American populace that abortion is not really that much of a partisan issue when you look at the polling? And how do you think voters, you know, discern that, Susan, if they're changing positions like this? 
Well, first of all, people do change positions mm -hmm. all the time. That's not unique to Florida or anywhere else in an election year. But what's interesting about the abortion issue, Democrats are putting 100% almost of their efforts and their thoughts of how to win Florida in Amendment 4 and the abortion issue. The question is, is that going to be enough to drive voters to the polls? Because a poll that just came out yesterday, Florida Atlantic University, found that just 13% of Floridians put that as their top issue. Almost two-thirds put immigration, economics, or the cost of living. It's a big gamble to just put all your eggs in one basket and ignore inflation, which affects everyone. Uh, speaking of repositioning, we saw this week that Governor DeSantis signed a new law that now limits book ban challenges, or at least would keep that in check. Um, you've got teachers leaving this state in droves. We did a story last week where we got the exit interviews, and they're citing politics as one of the reasons that they're leaving, not the number one reason. They're not getting paid enough. But uh, when the dust settles on this, how are people supposed to view uh, DeSantis when he sold this so hard, identity politics, and now he seems to be backtracking, and this is exactly what people predicted would happen, the chaos that resulted in these book ban challenges? It was a time in which he proposed that. For, think, uh, think back, it was the 2022 election. Parental involvement was at a peak because it was in the midst of COVID. And so the more parents were involved in complaining about books that their kids were bringing home or had access to or what was being taught in the classroom, obviously that was the birth of the original DeSantis proposal. But obviously there was, as is true of many bills, unintended consequences right. often require reform. It's easy to write another thing to enforce. Is it just a political trend at the I end mean, of the day? I mean, I think that I agree with Susan on that point, but I'm going to elaborate just a little bit. So, you know, he should have seen this coming, coming because he was warned mm -hmm. that this was going to open the floodgates to book challenges, which is exactly what happened. And it's exactly why he rolled it back. He says, you know, I didn't realize that people who didn't even have kids in school were going to start, you know, en masse, ban, you know, challenging all of these books. So that's why he's walking it back. He's not saying we shouldn't do this. We right. shouldn't challenge them. He's saying we shouldn't have people who aren't, you know, affiliated with the schools doing it. So he should have known. But, I, you know, he's, he's got good cover there, I Poli think. Politics is politics. All right, guys, thank you. Hang with me. We'll be right back next on Full Circle Florida. Heavy is the crown in the House and the trials of Trump.